Hello and welcome to Krishi Agran business platform that keeps you updated with all the agri news of the nation. This is Yash Saxena. Let's take a quick look at the top headlines of the day. Farmers to get relief of 32,000 rupees per hectare for crop loss due to hail storms and rain, says MPCA. Ayush Ministry felicitates Padma Awardees 2023 for their immense contribution to Ayush. Revelist Irrigation India's MD discusses growth of micro irrigation sector with Krishi Jagran. UB plans to replace 17% of rice cultivation area with millets. Haryana CM announces 15.5 crore rupees compensation for flooded farmlands. TNAU and ICAR Sugarcane Breeding Institute Coimbatore develops new sugarcane variety. Ambani is the only Indian in world's top 10 billionaires with net worth of $82 billion. Israel Ambassador donates drip irrigation system to Children's Park in Delhi. World Bank pledges 500 million US dollar to assist Lebanon's agriculture sector. Now the news in detail. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivra Singh Chauhan said on March 21st that farmers will be paid 32,000 rupees per hectare for crop losses of more than 50% due to hail storms and untimely rainfall in the state. CM Chauhan further stated that the amount of crop insurance program would be handled to farmers individually. He also stated the officials that the horticulture crops should be included in the study. The farmers should not be concerned the date of repayment of the victim farmers, loans will be extended and the interest will be paid off by the government. Farmers will also be given 0% interest loans for the following crops, he said. The chief minister further stated that the deadline for purchasing at the minimum support price would be extended. The daughters of such families will also be married under Mukhya Mantri Kanya Viva Yojana which will provide 56,000 rupees to the family. Ministry of Ayush organized a felicitation ceremony on March 21st evening to recognize Padma awardees of 2023 who have contributed in the field of Ayush. Kamlesh Patel, recipient of Padma Bhushan, president of the Ramchandra Mission in Hyderabad was honored by Union Minister of Ayush Sarvananda Sonwar. Dr. Manuranjan Sahu, Padma Shri awardee for prominent Ayurveda practitioner and surgeon and Dr. Gopal Isami, recipient of Padma Shri senior Siddha practitioner for their contributions to the popularization of Ayurvedic methods. Sarvananda Sonwal hailed the Padma awardees saying that their achievements are an inspiration to all of us and their unshakable commitment to excellence serves as a shining example to the entire nation. He stated that these awards are a symbol of greatness and it is a source of great pleasure for the nation to recognize individuals who have made significant contributions to our society. Krishyagran today organized KJ Chapal in which dignitaries associated with agriculture or progressive farmers and officials keep coming to visit. Because of this, KJ Chapal has now become a topic of discussion in the agriculture sector today. This time, Kaushal Jaiswal participated in the Krishyagran Chapal program. He is currently managing director at Revelous Irrigation India Private Limited and senior VP at Irrigation Association of India. He visited Krishi Jagran and interacted with the young team. Not only this, he also gave his valuable time in KJ Chopal, where he shared many important information related to the irrigation industry. And I am representing uh, industry, micro irrigation industry, and which is known facts, the globally known facts about that. Water is a limited resource available in this globe, particularly the fresh water. Right? And without fresh water, it's difficult to survive. That's a fact of life. And in India, the total consumption of whatever fresh water we consume, out of that 85% is consumed in agriculture and irrigation. Also, he emphasized on how micro irrigation could help farmers boost their income and reduce the cost of production, as well as he thanked the members of Krishi Jagran and appreciated the team's collective efforts to uplift farmers of the nation.
The Yogi Adityanath government intends to replace around 17% of paddy cultivation with millets and oil seeds in the coming years, according to a top agriculture department official. Uttar Pradesh, the country's second largest rice producer, has 60 lakh hectares of paddy cultivation spread across 70 districts. The state government intends to reduce this to 50 lakh hectares while reallocating the land to millets and oil seeds, a move that could result in a radical shift in cropping patterns. Officials stated that the change would be brought about through concerted and extensive farmer campaigns. According to the sources, the state government also intends to promote exotic rice varieties with higher returns. According to yesterday's statement by Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar, an amount of 15.5 crore rupees has been paid to the farmers who are unable to sow crops due to water logging. Khattar was speaking at a Wednesday call to action motion addressing agricultural damage compensation. Regarding the opposition's allegations of irregularities and the lack of payment to many impacted farmers, Khattar responded, We shall investigate if there was any delay in the payment to farmers. The guilty will face a strict punishment. The administration has decided to give precedence to farmers using micro irrigation when giving tube well connections in order to solve the issue of water crisis in Haryana and guarantee the best possible use of the water that is already available, Khattar said earlier during the question hour. Cooperative sugar mills across the state have placed the highest demand order of 160 tons of cane seeds for the new high yielding variety of CO1809 Punagai developed by Tamil Nadu Agricultural University in collaboration with the Indian Council of Agricultural Research Sugarcane Breeding Institute in Coimbatore for planting in 2024. Because of the ethanol program, sugar mills are progressively coming out of the red and are able to settle pending farmers' dues by relying on the most productive sugarcane types. Official sources claimed that the cooperative sugar mills had placed for 140 tons of Avani variety and 75 tons of Atolia variety in addition to the almost 375 tons of cane seeds sold so far. According to TNAU Vice Chancellor V. Gita Lakshmi, the non-flowering Punagai cultivar preferred by farmers yields up to 160 tons per acre. In the last six years, ethanol supply remuneration has more than doubled, resulting in significant increase in farmers' income. According to industry observers, a eight-fold increase in procurement in the last six years, as well as a nearly 2.5-fold increase in procurement price, has resulted in a large boost in farmers' income. According to a report released by research platform Hurun on Wednesday in collaboration with the real estate firm M3M titled the 2023 M3M Hurun Global Rich List, Mukesh Ambani, chairman of Reliance Industries, is the only Indian to be included among the top 10 billionaires in the world once more. Ambani, who has a net worth of $82 billion, came in the first place among Indian billionaires on this list, followed by Gautam Adani, who has a net worth of $53 billion. The report states that Mukesh Ambani's net worth was $82 billion and that his fortune has decreased at a pace of 20%. Gautam Adani, on the other hand, has seen a 35% year-over-year decline in wealth. He comes in at number 23 on the list of the world's wealthiest people. The steep decline in the wealth of billionaires throughout the world, according to Anas Rahman Junaid, Managing Director and Chief Researcher at Hurun India, is caused by a variety of factors including growing inflation, higher interest rates by international central banks and the stronger dollar. On the occasion of World Water Day, Israeli ambassador to India, Nayor Gillon, donated and launched a drip irrigation system at India Gates Children Park in New Delhi. Israeli ambassador Gillon remarked during the inauguration of the irrigation system that it was designed in Israel and is one of the greatest way to preserve water. We want to implement drip irrigation in all gardens soon. This is a continuous project that will only grow in size. This is one of the most effective strategies to conserve water. He further stated that both countries, India and Israel, are cooperating in the sphere of agricultural technologies. This drip irrigation system is a result of Israel's expanding collaboration with India and corresponds with India's Make in India initiative. The World Bank said that it will give roughly 300 million US dollars this year to offer social protection to Lebanon's poor population and invest 200 million US dollars in the country's agriculture sector. The remarks were made by Farid Belhaj, World Bank Vice President for the Middle East and North Africa during a meeting with Prime Minister Najib Mikati to discuss measures to assist the country during its present economic crisis, according to Sinwa. He also stated that World Bank is exploring 200 US dollars to 150 million US dollar investment in renewable energy projects in Lebanon. It has been ravaged by the most devastating multi-pronged crisis in its modern history for nearly three years. According to the World Bank, the growing economic and financial crisis that began in October 2019 has been compounded by the dual economic impact of the pandemic 
and the major port of Beirut explosion in August 2020. So, this was all about the news. For more updates on Agri News, stay tuned with Krishi Jagran Business. This is Yash Saksena, signing off.